Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com. Thanks so much for checking out this video and for all you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Had my first Father's Day myself, which was absolutely wonderful. So can't imagine life before this, obviously. Uh, I wanna go over all of the trades that we made on Friday of this week. So this video is actually being recorded on Sunday before the market opens again on Monday. But again, all of these trades are for Friday's alerts, and I know I had a lot of new people sign up this week, a lot of questions about new trades and how we went over things. So I wanna to get to all of these and have time for them. So again, just bear with us through this video if it's a little bit longer. The first trade I wanna go over tonight is the QQQ calendar. Now this is a trade uh, that we got into bright and early in the morning. It was actually filled pretty much right away and probably filled a little bit over the price that we wanted to. I think the market was trading around 53 cents and we actually got it for about 55 cents in a debit. But on this calendar, all we're doing is basically saying that we think that the queues are gonna go down and as they go down, possibly in July or June here at the end of this month, that we're gonna see a rise up in implied volatility. And that's what we want with the calendar, right? We wanna make not only a little bit of a directional bet, but also a bet on implied volatility going higher. And so what we did is we went ahead and bought a calendar. We went and bought the August 98 puts and sold the July I'm sorry, the 89 puts, bought the August 89 puts and sold the front month, which is July 89 puts. So buying the back month, selling the front month, same strike price, same side of the market, put versus call, that's the definition of a calendar. If we actually go to the chart here, you can see where the queues have been trading recently and you can see just how fast and how quickly the queues have risen, but they are starting to fall a little bit and you start to see that kind of, that rounding top pattern that we start to see where the market just really tries and tries and and then starts to slowly fall away from its highs. Now our strikes are centered around 89, so it's a little bit of a distance away from the market as far as the center of our calendar spread, but actually we've got a pretty good uh, window of opportunity here to make some money, and I'll show you guys that here in a second on the Analyze tab. But again, the reason that we made this trade on the calendar side is because we have really, really low implied volatility. It's not even in the teens or the 20s, it's down in the single digits. So we're at 6% implied volatility, which is obviously reflective of where the VIX is, still staying low, under 14 and 15. So this really means that we have a good opportunity that if the market does fall or even trades a little bit sideways to down and we see a jump up in implied volatility, then this position should make some money fairly quickly before we get to July expiration. If we go to the Analyze tab and you guys can take a look at the queues here, it's only three queues now, not four, then you see this is our big calendar spread that we have in the queues. But notice that this is where the queues are trading right now. So this line that I'm kind of drawing on the screen. And you'll see that actually the queues don't need to move much for us to actually make a little bit of money at expiration. In fact, they only need to move just down around 91.75 or so. And then between 91.75, so call it 91 and a half, and between 86 is our window of opportunity to make some money at July expiration. Now again, the, me the max point of this calendar is 89. So that's where we make the most money. That's our maximum gain. We don't intend on really hitting that point on the dot because that's very, very hard to do. But our window of opportunity is between 86 and call it 91 and a half. So if we go back to the chart here, you can see that our window of opportunity is between 86, which is all the way down here, and again, call it 91 and a half. So we just need a little bit of movement in the stock. And obviously we are playing it directionally to the downside but our window of opportunity is very, very large on this calendar spread, which is why we like it, right? It's a very large opportunity, so so long as the market falls inside this window, and obviously the sooner and faster it goes down, the more we're gonna make on this trade because of implied volatility. All right, so some of the trades that we closed out today, one of the trades that we closed out was COF, which was Capital One, and we just had a simple debit put spread on Capital One. We had bought it for about mid-price, sold back to the market our 85.80 put spread, took in a credit of 330 on this, so we made a nice $81 profit. Again, this was more of a trade, as we had talked about uh, just a couple days ago, more of a trade to stay active in the market. We had actually bought this debit spread in Capital One right here at the top of the market. Again, just dumb luck in positioning and, and when we actually entered the trade, but we had really seen a huge rise up in the stock and along with some of the other financials and just thought that at some point we're gonna get a reversal in this thing and it's gonna trade lower and that's gonna give us an opportunity to make some money. And so it did. It actually traded lower the last couple of days. So we've only held on to this thing for about five trading days now. So it's a pretty good return on our investment for five trading days. And we started to see implied volatility start to tick up in this, which also helped our position. But 
At this point, there's no use in holding it all the way through till next expiration. We've made some pretty decent money on this. It's only a single lot. So we're just going to take our 81 bucks and run with it. All right, the other trade that we closed out today is one of our credit spreads, and that was our put credit spread in CRM, which is Salesforce. So the ticker symbol is CRM for that one. Again, July expiration option. We bought back our 5045 credit put spread that we had originally sold for a little over $100 and bought it back today for a 50 cent debit. So this again meets our criteria for credit spreads to buy that buy them back or start buying them back at about 50% of the max gain. So what that means is that if we sold the credit spread for a little over $100, we look to buy back that spread around $50 or so. So about halfway between our max gain. We don't want to hold this thing for another 36 days just to make another 50 bucks. We've actually done really well on this spread as CRM has rallied with the general market. That's really helped our position below the market start to decay and devalue. So we went ahead and bought that back today for $50, made $56 on each of the spreads that we bought back. So we made a nice uh, over a little over $100 profit on this one. Again, very small position, just trying to keep directional, but you can see that we had not only an uptick in the stock over the last couple of weeks, so a nice move higher in the stock, but also up here implied volatility has gone down. So when we sold this spread originally, implied volatility was up above the 50th percentile. Now it's down around the 38th percentile. So again, if the market gives you exactly what you're looking for, a move up in the stock and a move down in implied volatility for your particular position, you've got to take that profit off the table. You can't just assume that the stock's going to continue higher and implied volatility is going to continue to drop, especially with CRM. CRM is very, very... Uh, touchy feely and, and very uh, uh, volatile. It'll go up for five days and down for four days, and up for three days and down for five days. So it's all over the place. It could easily turn back around and go right at our position even before June expiration. So we want to take this opportunity to get some money off the table and kind of take our profits and, and go to the on to the next trade. All right, the other trade that we closed out here today is our XOP butterfly. Now this actually came out in two separate alerts and that's because we had originally hedged this trade into a butterfly. It was not originally a butterfly, it was actually a broken wing butterfly. So what we had done is we had originally bought a broken wing butterfly for credit, which we typically do when we buy a broken wing butterfly. And as XOP had traded lower, then we were able to buy back the embedded call spread. And again, I've got tons of video tutorials on these, so you can just check them out right inside the membership platform if you haven't need some more education on embedded call spreads and butterflies and broken wing butterflies, all of that. But we bought back the embedded call spread <clears throat> for a small debit, which basically left us a risk-free butterfly, meaning that we had absolutely no risk after we made the hedge. So anywhere that XOP traded, we would make money at expiration. Now, the idea with leaving these risk-free butterflies on is the one in a million chance that it actually lands right on your middle strike, which is 79. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen by June expiration, but it came pretty darn close. And so as XOP had then rallied back up towards 79, that gave us an opportunity to then sell back this butterfly for credit, just taking a little bit bigger profit on the actual trade overall. So it wasn't a home run trade, but it was actually a really, really good example of leaving a trade on just long enough to actually see something happen, right? And in our case, we made one small adjustment or one small hedge to the trade to begin with, and at the end of the day, that actually allowed us this opportunity to have this kind of lottery ticket, if you will, to see if XOP would rally back up around 79, which it actually did. So that gave us a good opportunity to then be a little bit more nimble in how we exited and take a little bit more money off the table. All right, the last trade that we want to go over is a hedge or adjustment. And this is a closing order for RUT. So for those of you who have been following along, and I know you have because I've gotten a lot of comments and emails about this one, we went ahead and bought back that calls, or I'm sorry, that put spread that we had not rolled up. So when we tried to roll up just last week, <clears throat> one of our put spreads, we had originally sold the put spread closer to the market that had now made it inverted, but we had failed to get out of this put spread below the market because honestly, I wanted to get the price that I wanted to get, which was right around 40 or 45 cents. And so it's taken a couple days to actually get that price, but that's okay. The market has been you know, very favorable for us. It didn't really trade against us or we would have gotten out of it earlier. But we went ahead and bought back this embedded vertical spread in RUT so that we now have 
really a true inverted iron condor that we were looking for or an upside down butterfly if you will kind of right around uh, 1 or 1140 1150 so if I go to the chart of the trade tab here of RUT just so you guys can see what this new position looks like this new position which is inverted looks like this and again it looks like an upside down butterfly where it's inverted around 1140 and 1150 so that's the only area that we don't want to see RUT close around by June expiration this coming week we do not want to see RUT close anywhere between 1140 and 1150 because then we start to lose money at expiration now, obviously we can adjust out of this trade if we need to but with RUT trading up around 1162 and the market fairly strong, I feel confident that we'll at least get out of this position ahead of time uh, before expiration for sure. So that's really what our position looks like. That's the final result of all of our adjustments. And obviously we'll go over our, the end result at the end of expiration with RUT because we made a lot of adjustments to this trade all to reduce risk, which we've done all along the way and really turned what something what could have been a full, full, full loser into either a very small loser or if we make another adjustment possibly uh, a nice profitable trade at the end of expiration so here's a chart of RUT just to kind of finalize this trade again what we don't want to see is we don't want to see RUT trade anywhere between 1140 and 1150 so small window of opportunity to lose some money but again the market's very close to it so we're going to monitor this carefully and if we need to make adjustments we will make adjustments along the way and then send out video tutorials for those as well as always, hope you guys really enjoy these videos. If you have any comments or questions, please add them right below this video. I'll get back to all of those tonight or tomorrow before the open and happy trading.